Welcome to the Unit 6.4 Synopsis video. This video will give you a big picture look at this unit, introducing key components such as the unit challenge scenario, the flow of lessons, and the content background required. If you have access to the unit materials, you may find it helpful to use the unit overview along with this video. The full title of this unit is Protect Your Cell Phone, Forces and Motion. This unit is the fourth unit of the sixth grade. However, it is a unit that can be moved to 7th or 8th grade based on the time constraints and needs of individual school districts. The unifying cross-cutting concept is systems and system models. This cross-cutting concept is vital to successfully completing the unit challenge. To become oriented with the other cross-cutting concepts and science and engineering practices, be sure to read through the NGSS Connections document, which can be found linked under Unit Content Resources in the unit overview. Pause the video and take a moment to read the unit challenge scenario. Simply put, our challenge is to design a case to protect a mock cell phone from everyday forces, specifically from being crushed or dropped. During the unit, we construct a mock cell phone to use in our case design testing. This makes for an engaging, hands-on challenge where students get to design, build, test, and evaluate their protective cases. The goal of the unit is to enable students to use science and engineering knowledge and skills to identify and model forces in order to create the best possible cell phone case. Let's look at how this unit challenge flows through the unit. Students first consider the challenge. As they read the scenario, students begin to think of the criteria and constraints and possible materials they may be able to use. Students begin to design two tests, a crush test and a drop test, to investigate how well their proposed phone case works. Students need to continually revisit the original problem as they learn from each lesson. Getting to the meat of the unit, students spend a lot of time creating and refining models that depict how forces are exerted on objects. These models not only allow students to visualize forces, but also help them predict how the forces may change an object's motion. The investigations and models are used in creating each team's solution to the challenge, a well-designed phone case. The unit culminates in testing and evaluating the phone case. Students will love the hands-on aspect of this unit challenge. At first glance, the unit challenge seems straightforward and easy to accomplish. However, there is a lot of difficult foundational content required for students to succeed with the challenge. Traditionally, when students learn about Newton's second and third laws, they often become proficient at reciting the laws or parts of them, but may have little understanding as to what these laws actually mean in everyday situations. To help students develop a better understanding of what forces are and what they actually do, MyStar doesn't formally introduce Newton's laws. Instead, we introduce two ways to model forces, simply called one-object and two-object force models. These models help students visualize forces acting on and between objects. There is more detail about these models in a separate MyStar video referenced in the lesson plans and in this unit primer. How forces affect motion is yet another difficult concept for students and is addressed in Lesson 4, where students design an investigation to explore the effect of force on change in motion, the effect of mass on change in motion, and then try to tie the two relationships together. This may bring the famous equation F equals MA to mind, if you're wondering, that's part of Newton's second law. But it's important to know that in this lesson, the goal is to give students adequate time and support to discover and explore these relationships, not just give them a formula to plug numbers into. Additionally, teachers and students alike must be aware of the word choices they use when describing motion, as there is a difference between motion and change in motion. Also of note, there is a specific choice in vocabulary in this unit. Acceleration is not introduced until late in the unit. Instead, the phrase change in motion is used as a more concrete way of describing acceleration. In this unit, students apply what they have learned about the one object and two object models by studying two different types of collisions. In lesson five, students explore how the use of cushioning helps minimize the force objects experience by increasing the time of the collision. 
students practice modeling collisions between two objects as a warm-up to Lesson 6. In Lesson 6, students explore the forces acting on various objects when a car and its contents collides with a van and its contents in controlled safe conditions. This exploration uncovers the idea that an unbalanced force is needed to change the motion of an object. Until that unbalanced force acts, the object's speed remains constant, either stationary or moving with constant velocity. This concept is very difficult for sixth graders and probably most middle school students to grasp. So we suggest teachers spend time reading some of the reference materials provided by MyStar before engaging students in this part of the unit. Let's take a closer look at each lesson and how they progress from one to the next. Lesson one engages students in a discussion of protecting objects from forces by first witnessing their teacher being injured from a heavy object, which requires some acting on your part. Then, designing a way to protect a paper person from being crushed. This activity gets students thinking about ways to minimize forces, which they see is vitally important when they're introduced to the unit challenge. After the anchoring experience and reading through the unit challenge, students construct a unit bubble map of questions which need to be answered in order to successfully complete the unit challenge. Remember, the unit bubble map should be revisited and revised often. Students should be able to add and answer questions as they progress through the unit. Students dive into their exploration of forces in Lesson 2 by first witnessing, then taking part, in something which may seem strange pushing on a wall. The wall doesn't move even though the person pushing on the wall is definitely applying a force. Why is this? Students make models for the first time in this lesson and model the forces present in the simple situation of pushing a wall. Teachers help students work through the two object model and examine the force pairs present. Through several other examples, students begin to see that when two objects interact, the forces are always equal and opposite. Note, to prepare for this lesson and the next lesson, teachers should review the force models reference video provided in the Lesson 2 plan. Lesson 3 shifts the focus from a two-object model to a one-object model. In this lesson, students are trying to observe and model the forces acting on one object in order to explain or predict any changes to the system. First, students see several objects being crushed by a machine. They see that objects can retain their form when forces are small, but with increasing force, the objects begin to deform and are crushed. Students become engineers as they design paper towers that can withstand the weight of textbooks. Whose tower will hold the most? Like the can pictured here, students will see that their towers may be able to withstand a few books, but will be crushed with an increasing number of books. Students model the forces present on the books and come to understand that the books only crush the tower when the forces become unbalanced. That is, when the forces on the books become unbalanced, the books move downward. Again, make sure to review the force model video before teaching. Teachers with additional questions are encouraged to use the MyStar online forum to communicate with other MyStar teachers about this unit. What is the difference between pulling a slingshot back just a little bit versus a lot? What is the difference between slinging a pebble compared to a rock? What is the difference between kicking a soccer ball versus a bowling ball? While we have inherent knowledge about these questions, can we explain our answers using science principles and language? Lesson 4 does not have students use slingshots and shoot things across the room. But the same ideas are explored when students create a tabletop penny launcher from a rubber band which slides pennies across a sheet of graph paper. Students practice components of a fair investigation to explore how mass affects change in motion and how force affects change in motion. Students then design a fair investigation for their cell phone case crush test as well as complete an embedded assessment about their investigation findings. At this point in the unit, teachers are encouraged to look and plan ahead. Students have the option in this lesson, as well as in lesson six, to do some testing with mock cell phones made from lasagna noodles and graham crackers. Teachers will decide the ideal time in the unit for their students to make and use the mock phones. Have you ever heard the phrase, it's not the fall that hurts, it's the sudden stop at the end? 
In Lesson 5, students explore that idea by designing and testing a naked egg drop. Students know from previous experiences that dropping a raw egg on the floor will result in a mess. Now they explore how well various cushioning materials protect the egg from breaking. Students will share their findings through an evidence quest where they meet with other student groups to discuss the evidence pertaining to a series of scientific statements. Connecting the lesson to the unit challenge, students design a drop test for their cell phone case using ideas learned from the egg drop test. They may also modify their case designs based on their findings about the cushion materials they tested. Here is another opportunity for students to drop a mock cell phone if they have built them. Lesson 6 continues to examine collisions, this time with multiple objects. Students observe a controlled and safe collision involving two vehicles, two crash dummies, and a large bag of sand. They work in groups to analyze the crash with partners, each taking one component of the system. The lesson focuses on the difference between constant velocity and acceleration, or change in motion. Students write stories from the perspective of a specific object describing how the object experiences the time just before and then during the collision. It is then their job to identify when, how, and why the object changes its motion. This change in motion is formally introduced in this lesson as acceleration, and students see that an unbalanced force must be present for acceleration to occur. Students will put their multi-object system models together and share with others in a consensus discussion about unbalanced forces and acceleration. Teachers really need to plan ahead for this lesson. Students begin constructing their cell phone cases, so teachers should make preparations to have materials on hand or have students bring in materials from home prior to the start of this lesson. Lesson 7, the unit closer, contains the culminating experience for the unit. Students have been busy learning about modeling and applying forces in everyday situations, including Marcus's cell phone. They designed investigations for the crush and drop tests and built a physical phone case. This lesson is when students scientifically test their cases and observe the results. Students use their observations and other unit challenge products to create a presentation of their findings. Students share their presentations and peer review presentations of other groups to decide which cell phone cases satisfy Marcus's criteria and constraints and successfully address the unit challenge. Thank you for watching the Unit 6.4 Synopsis video introducing MyStars Unit 6.4 Protect Your Cell Phone Forces and Motion.